The story takes place two years ago, when I was living in the same house as my two younger sisters and my father. We lived in a neighborhood that wasn't necessarily unsafe, but wasn't the best neighborhood for people to live in. I can recall some neighbors getting arrested for dealing when I was maybe five, but the story isn't about them. In the summer of 2018, my sisters and I would stay up late into the night, sometimes only going to bed after the sun had risen. I was 17 and my sisters were 15 and 13. My father would go to bed early as he was a responsible adult. To explain the situation best, I need to describe what my house looked like. It was a one-story home with four doors on the front of my house, three of which opened to our living room and one of which opened to my bedroom. Our backyard fence had been knocked down by a storm recently and we had two doors on the back of the house, one that opened to the kitchen and one that opened to my father's room. One night at around 12.30 a.m. I was doing what I usually did. I was listening to scary stories on my phone as I made art on my iPad. I didn't use earbuds because I've always been paranoid that something might happen while I'm using them. My sisters, who shared a room down the hall from me, were doing whatever they did at night. It didn't really concern me. My father was fast asleep in his room. Now, I don't know about all of you, but I always end up very on edge when I'm listening to scary stories, so I'm hyper aware of what's going on around me. You can imagine how hard I jumped when I heard a sharp pounding on our front door. Four hard thuds could be heard throughout the house, and I could hear the front door shake with the strength of each knock. I checked the time, terrified. It was 1am. I held my breath, hoping to God that I'd heard wrong. I really didn't want to think someone was at my front door. At this moment, my middle sister Jen came running to my room trying to keep her step silent. She looked at me, eyes wild. You heard that too, right? She asked, voice trembling. I swallowed and nodded, heart pounding in my chest. We need to go wake dad up. I responded and started towards my father's bedroom. Julia followed diligently behind me. On her way to our dad's room, my youngest sister, Ness, peeked her head out from her room. She too looked scared. I opened my dad's door and shook him awake, trembling slightly. One of my worst fears is someone breaking into our house. Dad, someone's at the front door. Even as I said this, I felt sick. What? Dad whispered groggy and not at all happy that we had woken him. There's someone here, Jen whispered. I heard it. Someone knocked on the door. I nodded all too eagerly. My dad slowly got out of bed. He knew that my sisters and I always jumped to the worst conclusions whenever anything happened, so he assumed we were doing the same here. I watched silently as he went to the front door, my stomach leaping to my throat. There's no one out there. He told my sisters and I, absolutely unimpressed as he looked through the blinds. My heart sank a little. I kind of started to doubt myself, but my sisters had heard the knocking too, so I knew I wasn't alone in this. I tried to reason with him before he went back to bed, but he didn't believe us, too scared to really care what we were saying. Dejected but scared, I ended up taking my mattress off my bed and sleeping in my sister's room for the night taking a baseball bat and lying it next to my mattress. My overactive imagination had me thinking that whoever was at the door was out to kill us, and I knew I had to defend my younger sisters against any danger that dared enter our house. The next day passed just fine. My sisters and I knew we had heard something, and our dad brushed off our attempts to explain it. He thought we were sleep-deprived, or perhaps that a large bug had hit our door. That explanation I had frowned at. It wasn't until 11pm that night when my father was lounging on one of the couches in the living room that we heard the pounding again, only this time it was much more aggressive and directly on the door behind my father. My father let out a loud, frustrated scream and charged toward the front door. I had been standing in the living room when the pounding occurred again and my sisters had rushed to stand next to me after hearing my father shout. We were all shaken. Our father never yelled like that. I started to cry as my father went to rush outside and confront whoever was out there. I begged him not to go outside in case he were to get hurt. He told my sisters and I to call the cops and he cursed some more when he realized that whoever had knocked on the door was now gone. My sisters called the cops and they arrived fairly quickly, 
talking with my dad about what was going on, claiming that there had been other complaints about this happening and explaining that they would try their best to find out who was doing this. The police did a search around her house but didn't find anyone, even searching the backyard where I was afraid the perpetrator might be. The police assured us that someone would patrol the neighborhood that night. Once the cops were gone, my dad apologized for not believing us the night before. We said it was okay and left it at that. He locked all of the doors and stayed up later than my sisters and I. I couldn't calm down, so I slept in my sister's room that night as well. Eventually, though, I put this situation behind me. A few months had passed, but not without nightmares and sleep paralysis about the whole ordeal. Most nightmares ended with someone breaking in and hurting my sisters. Other nightmares ended in more brutal ways. I thought nothing more of the whole ordeal. This is until one day I came home from school, and Ness ran up to me, buzzing with energy. She proceeded to tell me that apparently... The cops had found out who was knocking on everyone's door about a month or so ago. It was some older guy who lived a few houses down from us. They had gotten him to stop, and I'm not sure if he was given a warning or something. He was a little unstable mentally and nobody had ever opened their doors for him. Ness then told me that the same guy had been arrested earlier this day. I was shocked. He'd only been knocking on people's doors at odd hours of the night, I asked her why he'd been arrested. He shot and killed 15 people one town over. She responded. I couldn't believe it. But my father later confirmed the story. I'm happy to say that he is in jail and no longer lives in that neighborhood. I haven't done any more looking into his crime other than trying to confirm it for myself the day he was arrested. I am also happy to say that after another recent event where someone tried to break into our house, my father installed a ring doorbell, the doorbell with the camera, which gave my sisters and I some comfort. I hope this man gets what he deserves, or maybe that he gets the help he needs if he really truly is completely insane. I also hope that the families affected by this man's actions are able to find some form of closure in knowing that he's locked away. For what? He's done. This happened back in 2009, but after finding this sub, I felt compelled to share. My husband and I were 21, just moved into our first apartment, and I was about six months pregnant. The small one-bedroom apartment we found wasn't one of those nicer, corporately owned communities. It was more like a slumlord situation, but rent was cheap and we were just getting started in life. A little backstory. The city we were in was still close to family and my husband had a great aunt we knew lived nearby. She was one of those family members we would only see at big family reunions so it wasn't like we had a close relationship. As a great aunt, she was one of like 13 children. You know back in the day when everyone had a thousand kids and she had been married for many years with four of her own children. They were all mostly grown up but being that this was over a decade ago, her youngest was maybe 16 or so at the time. We hardly ever saw him at reunions because he was one of those gang-banging kids that was always getting into trouble. Apart from his poor choices, he was born with a very striking facial deformity that really gave him a unique appearance. We'll call him E. So we had just moved in two weeks prior to this incident. I was only working part-time, so I came home early in the day and continued to unpack and organize until my husband got home in the evenings. Our then-English bulldog was my faithful companion, and although they have a lazy stigma, she was a great guard dog. So it was early evening and there was still light out when I started hearing banging or prying of some sort coming from the back of the apartment where our bedroom was. On the other side of our bedroom... The back wall faced the parking lot, so we got a significant amount of noise when people came and went. At first, I figured it had to be a gardener or someone loading things from their car. As the noise continued, I realized it was right up against that wall. I peeked out our window, but due to the angle, I really couldn't see much. This noise obviously aggravated our dog, who wouldn't stop burfing. You dog owners know what I'm talking about, and it was starting to make me scared. 
Cheap rent came with some shady neighbors and we quickly realized this wasn't going to be a long-term residence. So, this noise continued. My dog continued to burf and I was getting freaked out because I couldn't see anything outside our window and I didn't have the guts to go investigate. I was really pregnant and I don't like running even when not pregnant. Finally, my husband made it home just as it's getting dark and at this point I hadn't heard the noise for nearly an hour. Of course, I tell him right away that I had been freaked out for the last few hours because of banging, prying, and moving going on outside. So yes, he went to investigate and came back saying nothing seemed out of place. Later that same night, we had made dinner, eaten, and my husband was shaving in the bathroom getting ready to take a shower before bed. Suddenly I hear him yell, Hey! in the deepest booming voice I had ever heard. I come quickly running to the living room and I see my husband and his boxers stretch from just outside the bathtub with both his hands on the small windows still inside the shower and tub. I ask him what happened and he turns with an alarming look on his face and says, Someone's cut the screen. I had chills go straight down my spine and was basically frozen. He yelled for them to get out of here. When some more movement started happening and he slammed the window shut and locked it. This is the uncomfortable part. As soon as he turned around again, out of breath he says to me, That was my cousin E. I was so shocked. I asked him if he was sure and he says he could recognize that face anywhere. And then he started questioning what the odds were that E recognized him. And to this day we really didn't know. Immediately following the incident, we had the manager replace the screen and I placed a dowel in the window to keep it shut. We lasted nine months in that complex and will never rent from a slumlord again. We have also not seen E since even before the incident at a family reunion. About two years ago, we found out he had been incarcerated and isn't due to be released until 2022. We don't know what the charges were. The family keeps the situation hush-hush, but I truly hope we don't ever see him again.